You might think this is gimbal footage, but it's actually handheld, and I'm gonna be explaining exactly how to achieve this later in this video. But first, you may be here because you wanna know who is winning this, our ultimate documentary kit. Well, we'll be announcing the winner this Thursday, March 16th, as part of our opening week launch celebration for the Art of Documentary, so there's still time for you to sign up for this. You can run over to our Instagram or go to the link below in the video description to find out more. And just before getting to today's video, the doors are now open for our documentary. You can get up to 30% off for the next 72 hours. I know we're always talking about it, but gotta let you know, doors are open, so don't miss your chance to get into AOD right now. But let's jump into today's video. So I dumped my FX30 in the ocean. Ah, and it definitely stopped working. And I sort of needed it to film an active volcano in Hawaii. So I did what any smart camera person does and I doused it in a bucket of rice. I prayed to the camera gods and let it sleep in its carb tank. It smells good. And two days later, this was the results. Cooking up something all week here. Mm. Looks like, oh boy. Opened up the battery compartment and water poured out. One piece of rice just stuck right in there. There is so much salt in here. Okay, that took too much effort to come off. This oh, so that's bad. not so bad. It smells like the ocean. No, you know what it smells like? That's not the ocean. That's rice. You turning it on? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so, the cooling fan malfunction. Okay. That's, yes. <laughs> there was a moment. Yeah, the, well, the fan, that makes sense. Okay. Well, right, because there's a fan. There's a fan. Which is... But this is weird that the So in Hawaii, I had the chance to film the active volcano. And for this video, I'm gonna be talking about the FX30 and FX3. And if you want some footage from them, because a lot of you email me asking, Mark, which camera do I buy? I've actually put a download link below in the description and you can download full res, FX3, FX30, bunch of shots from my trip raw. You can go nuts with them. I even threw a bonus LUT in there if you want to play around with it. This might help you make a decision for what camera you're buying. You can see if you like them or if it compares well to the camera that you're using. I'll be giving some handheld tips, my shooting techniques, kind of overall how I get the most out of my cameras on dock shoots. And I especially want to talk about why I don't travel with gimbals on probably 95% of my dock shoots and how you can get smooth handheld footage without them. But first, let's get in the helicopter. 5.15 a.m. Just getting ready to head to the airport. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, you ready? Heck yeah. Hey, I did two helicopter shoots, one with Levi Allen, really cool guy, and one with Matt Pierce, a not so cool, I'm kidding, he's also really cool, I love Matt. There's a few different ways you can shoot out of a helicopter. There's of course, Tyler mounts, which is attached to the bottom, and shot overs, these really fancy $100,000 setups. The next best thing would be getting like a Kenyan 6x6 gyro, it's this gyro thing that attaches to the bottom and it keeps your camera stable. Because the most difficult part of shooting out of helicopters isn't actually getting good footage, you can shoot with the doors off or through a window. It's stopping the vibration of the propellers moving through the whole helicopter and into your camera and on the sensor. But there's a few just small things that I do in order to mitigate this. And it's nothing fancy, but it works and you can see the footage here, it's pretty dang stable. And this is just me holding it like this. So the five things I make sure to do is the first, I try to get the camera off my body. Because if I'm in on my body or I'm leaning against the helicopter, the vibrations will come through your arm. Arms act as kind of like a natural gimbal. The second is I shoot 60 frames and I pull it down to 24. That extra slow motion helps stabilize it in post. I don't find 120 frames all that helpful. I just think it's a bit too slow. I prefer 60, unless there's crashing waves, like you can see some of Levi's footage here. The 120 does look good there. Next technique I use is just, I just get on a wide lens because I'm likely going to post stabilize some of this. And the wide lens does two things. One, wider lenses are just less shaky because they're not zoomed in on the sensor. You're getting a wider view. And then also too, a wider lens allows you to crop in a bit if you do need to stabilize and post. And then that's my next point, is I make sure I'm not doing big camera moves. If I can hold the camera in one place, I know when I take it to post stabilization, it's going to look way better than if I'm moving up and down. So I try to hold my camera as still as possible. If I am gonna do pans, it's gonna be real, real slow. If I'm moving around a lot, the stabilization is gonna be hectic. People would rather look at a beautiful majestic shot than something that's ripping around and not stable. 
For me in Adobe Premiere, I try to add anywhere between five to 10% of the smoothness scale. Otherwise, anything above that can start getting pretty crazy. And then also too, if you're using a Sony camera, you can run it through Catalyst Browse. This is the best, Catalyst Browse does magic. It actually takes the gyro data from inside your camera, applies it to the footage, and this is when it gets pretty crazy. You can avoid so much shake. It does crop in and it does take a while to process, but it is mwah. And then my last point is if you can get a camera strap, sometimes pulling this against your body will help. It gives a third point of contact, although after a while you can start shaking if you're pulling on it pretty hard. And then also too, it can hurt your neck. It's not something I like to do a lot, but in a pinch, if you get that camera strap, you can sometimes go under your arm and pull it that way so that it's not pulling on your neck. Okay, we just came back from the volcano, and of course, who should be <laughs> recording at an airport? Wow. Anyways, the volcano was crazy. When we were up in the helicopter, you could feel the heat coming off of the lava, of course, but we were like a thousand feet up and it felt like someone just turned on the heater. But we just kept making passes back and forth. We're in a relatively small helicopter. This is not considered to be like a, a really giant one. So we are at its absolute altitude capacity or limit rather, it was 12,000 feet up. And so we were at full throttle, even the engine was telling us we were going full throttle, but I'm glad we did it. Two more points I forgot for stabilization and they just seem so obvious I forgot to say them. One, having a lens that has built-in image stabilization is fantastic. And then two, partnering that, pairing with it rather, your camera stabilization. So in the case of the 30 and the three, they not only stabilize your sensor, but there's an active image stabilization which crops in about 10 to 12%, but it gives you really smooth footage. So having that in combination with a lens that has IS plus on a wide lens, plus some post stabilization starts mitigating the fact of needing a gimbal. Now, of course, a gimbal will get you stable footage right out of the gate. But for me, traveling with that extra piece of gear and then being forced to having to shoot in a gimbal style all the time, just not ideal for my approach in filmmaking. There is times like this really important shot from my film OK that we really did want a gimbal, but that was the only time that entire feature film that I ever used that. Gimbals are great just not all the time. All right, so what ended up happening with the FX30? Two lessons to be learned. One, just, just don't put your camera in the ocean. Secondly, careful the size of rice you choose. I was messing around with this a couple days later in Hawaii, trying to get it to work, and I heard this tinging, tingling, ting to ting 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 bzzz. And lo and behold, out of this vent right here, a piece of rice spat out, and then suddenly, the fan started working again. And since then, this has worked perfectly. I guess just be careful of the size of rice you're choosing. I think I've doused every Sony camera I've ever had in water to some capacity. I have a sadistic problem that I like shots that are wet. Not endorsing putting your camera in water. He's so strong, this guy. And speaking of stabilization, there's these shots of me running. Again, this is no gimbal, nothing. This is handheld. This was just simply Jesse Driftwood standing, holding the camera. <laughs> Thank you. He was just holding the camera like this, sitting on the edge of the pickup truck, just like this. This was all he was doing. And there was bumps and everything. But with the active image stabilization, a wide lens, and like I said, just a tiny bit, talking like 8% smoothness on the warp stabilizer in Premiere, it's very smooth. But I hope this helped. Hope you're enjoying that footage from the FX30 and the FX3. Have fun with it. Comment below the camera you hope comes out in the next year. Maybe that's an FX3 version two. Maybe it's a white magic camera. There's a thought. I hate goodbyes. See you in the next one.